Gigabyte's X299 motherboard lineup features a range of options with support for Intel's Core X series CPUs. Boards like the Aorus X299 Gaming 7 are packed with useful features and support Optane memory, Thunderbolt 3, and USB 3.1 Gen 2. Click the link in the description for more information. Excellent! So like a week or two ago, a bunch of people did videos on NZXT's new case, the H700i, a full tower intelligent case that uh, NZXT has integrated some fancy new technology into to help you connect up fans, connect up RGB, and also some intelligence to control those features. Now what I'm gonna do today, theoretically might be your first look at the smaller version of the H700i, this is the H400i. It's a micro ATX case, also available in a variety of colors. I have the black and red version today. So my focus for today's video is going to be on this case, but to properly, properly demonstrate any case, it's best to build a system in it. So I'm actually gonna be doing an all AMD system today, which is my first all AMD system in like a really long time. I don't know how long it's been, but this is to celebrate the, the AMD Radeon Vega GPUs coming down in price to reside almost at their MSRP. This is the Radeon Vega 56, and you can actually get it for 400 to 420-ish dollars, at least as of the filming of this video. To go along with that, of course, I've got a Ryzen CPU, which is tucked right down there. I'm actually using the R7-1700, which is the eight core. Although if you are planning on building a system similar to this, I would say the uh, R5-1600 would also be an excellent choice, or the 1600X if you can get it for about the same price. Uh, a six core would be a good solution here. We're gonna have eight cores though. To keep our CPU cool, we have the NZXT Kraken X62, which will fit in this case, even though it is a very large radiator, 280 millimeter using two 140 millimeter fans. Uh, for memory, I have a Corsair Vengeance LED kit. I'm gonna try the white version of that kit, uh, although we do have some RGB LEDs in here too, and we'll see how it looks and I might swap it out. The color scheme, in case you didn't already realize, was black, red, and white. Uh, the white, primarily is gonna be provided by uh, the accent coloring on our motherboard here, the ASRock AB350M Pro 4. And if you're looking for a micro ATX AM4 motherboard that supports Ryzen CPUs, that looks pretty nice and that has uh, the features that you'd want on a motherboard like uh, four DIMM slots as well as M.2 support, this board has it and it's only about 75 bucks. The B350 chipset also means that it does allow overclocking of the Ryzen CPU and it does have some cooling on the power delivery for the uh, CPU as well. So hopefully we can get a bit of an overclock out of that too. We of course need to power the system. So we have the Corsair uh, V650 power supply, uh, which is gonna get the job done. It's 80 plus gold rated and it has all black cabling. And finally for storage, we have a new budget oriented SSD from OCZ Toshiba. This is the TR200, 480 gig version of it here. This is available in 480 and 240 gig capacities. And uh, we just, we, I wanted an SSD and I didn't want one that was too expensive. So there you go. Let's go ahead and get this build underway. So I got the H400i out of the box and let's, uh, let's take a first look at it. Of course, smaller sibling to the H700i if you watched any of the coverage on that and there's been excellent coverage by the likes of Hardware Connects and Gamers Nexus. Um, so first off, you're probably gonna notice this sort of redesigned cable management bracket right here that they put in. It's all red and it's it's got sort of an angular bit and this is meant to allow you to uh, conveniently route your cables along that in order to access things such as your power for your motherboard uh, or your graphics card coming out right there. So we'll see how that works out. Pre-installed, we have a couple 120 millimeter fans here at the front, as well as a single 120 millimeter uh, exhaust fan there at the back. The top has an exhaust area here with a removable, sorry, my wobbly, lazy Susan is wobbly, removable magnetically uh, outlined dust filter, so that is nice to have. And up there we have support for uh, 240 as well as 280 millimeter radiators. Up here for front I.O. we have a mic and a headphone jack, a couple USB 3.0 and a power button. If I was to ask for anything on modern cases, it's gonna be the addition of a USB type C, 
preferably a USB 3.1 Gen 2 compatible type C connector, but you do have the basics covered up there uh, for what it's worth. Beyond that, we have a basement down in the bottom. Well, we have a 2.5 inch mount right there that I'm probably actually not gonna use simply because our OCZ drive does not match our color scheme at all. But have no fear if that's the case for you. You got a couple more 2.5 inch drive mounts there on the back. You have this cable management area here as well that I really like because there's a couple different channels going up either side as well as uh, Velcro straps going across them. Uh, and of course, easy access to feed them through here uh, with some protection from visibility from the front by that cable management bracket that goes down there. And here you also find uh, power, which is gonna provide power for this central hub right here, which is part of their entire MO for this series is providing a little bit easier way to connect up fans, LEDs, and control them all. So power there, USB connection uh, to get to your motherboard for control via the cam software, LED out, and then a uh, one, two, and three fan connection points there as well. You've also got dust filter down here on the bottom for the power supply, so that's nice. Access from the back snaps into place. And then for general airflow, uh, in the front, most of your airflow is gonna come in the side here via these small circle holes that are kind of perforated in the side here. This is also, of course, uh, one of the colored accent pieces that is on either side. Uh, you are black, blocked from the direct front, but that will block some of the noise, of course, coming from your intake fans. And then down here, they've uh, also continued that sort of uh, circular hole scheme, but uh, this one has sort of a gradient effect since it goes from smaller holes to larger holes from the front to the back. It's kind of a cool thing. Cool looking. I like it. Uh, in our accessory kits, we have a set of screws, of course, some zip ties, very handy to have along, especially if you don't have those on hand from prior builds. Uh, looks like you get a couple extra standoffs in there. They did uh, put the standoffs in there for uh, mini ITX as well as not full micro ITX, but anyway, I gotta add a couple. RGB strip though, they have actually included two. Uh, this one comes with, it is magnetic. There we go. Uh, give you a little extension as well for it. And there is a second RGB strip that is pre-installed, although it might be hard to see, but it's uh, right up there along the top edge. So that one's in there for you. And then the second one they've included and they say, uh, just put that one wherever it works best for your build. Front panel up here is made of metal, so that is nice, and still removes in the classic way that front panels usually remove, with some uh, prongs in there that latch into the case itself. There's also, hidden beneath here, a pretty wide dust filter, and that is so you can set up various configurations up here with uh, 240 or 280 millimeter radiators. Uh, we're, of course, gonna be installing the Kraken, so we'll show you how much space you got there, but there's a lot of space. Uh, for radiators and I imagine push-pull configurations depending on the thickness of your, your radiator and all that. But for now, uh, we're gonna get these fans out of here. It was really nice and convenient of NZXT to pre-wire all of these cables coming down here. However, if you're removing all of these, then it becomes less convenient. But that's not to say they shouldn't have done it. They did a good job there, but uh, bear in mind, it's all wired in there pretty tight. So you're gonna need to go in there and fish out some of your fan headers to unplug. Speaking of uh, splitters, these connections all have splitters on the end. So the fan one, fan two, and fan three from the old unit up there all has three plugs on each end, which means you can uh, just out of the box connect up up to nine fans to that device. Now to make sure this build was as NZXT as possible, they did send over some extra fans and the fans are RGB and we know how much people love RGB. So uh, the top 140 fans and the rear 120 fan, we're gonna replace with NZXT Air RGB 140s. And the uh, kit that we have here also comes with the Hue controller, a Hue Plus controller. So we'll use that to connect these up. Uh, 
It's a little Hue Plus. Uh, it's a nice little device. Controls LEDs, uh, specially made by NZXT. Individually addressable LEDs, uh, which allows you to do some pretty cool effects with it. Discovered a shortcoming here with this case and compatibility, which is that our 2.5 inch drive mounts, uh, the one in the back here, this is a very thick unit, by the way, so this isn't going to be a problem with pretty much any SSD uh, on the market, but won't fit back here. There's simply not enough space there for the side panel to go on. So bear that in mind if you're uh, if we're thinking of installing it there. Also, we have our bling mount spot here for an SSD, and it's a little bit too wide to fit there either, unfortunately, which would have been a cool spot for it because it does have a little LED light on it that lights up, but... Um, that would definitely conflict with the tempered glass side panel window. So, we are left with only one place to put this, which is on the bottom of the case. Not physically on the bottom, but mounted to the bottom of the case. At the very bottom, in the uh, power supply section, there's a dual mount here. So you got these wider mounts for mounting a 3.5 inch drive, or these smaller mounts for doing a 2.5 inch drive. So we're going to pop it in right there. So guys, at this point I uh, thought we might be a little bit further along, but uh, the fact is that when you're attempting to connect up a bunch of RGB all at once, and you want it to be addressable and that kind of thing, there are some potential complications. Our main issue that we encountered was that our motherboard here has two of the requisite USB 2.0 uh, headers on the motherboard itself that you need to connect up. Uh, the devices that NZXT has produced in order to control RGB uh, as well as fans. So, of course, you got the smart device that's integrated with the H400i right here, and that needs a USB 2.0 connection. You also have our NZXT Hue Plus, uh, which also needs a USB 2.0 connection. And then we also have the, uh, the RGB control as well as connection for uh, the, the NZXT uh, control panel. So you can monitor temps and speeds and everything. And that also you need, needs a USB 2.0 connection, which the cable for that is lying around here somewhere. Anyway, I was attempting to see if I could daisy chain more of the fans together in order to get away with only having two of these connected, but that's not really the best idea. Uh, NZXT has informed me that when you're talking about connecting up these different RGB devices that they have created, you can uh, daisy chain up to four uh, LED strips together or up to four of the uh, fans, the air fans together, but you don't want to do both at the same time. So you want to have fans going on the same daisy chain or a couple of LED strips. Um, also, in order to uh, accommodate our need for additional USB 2 headers, we have the NZXT internal USB hub, which they had included in the box and which I had completely neglected to remember was even there. This allows you to take a simple USB 2.0 header on your motherboard and split it out into one, two, three more, plus a couple actual internal USB ports, USB 2.0 ports themselves. So we're gonna install this. That will allow us to connect up all the devices that we need in order to control all the LEDs.
There's a nice little feature. Uh, only just realized this was a thing, but removable front uh, tray for your radiator for your all one or otherwise cooler, uh, which is convenient because if you need to do something like pass those uh, tubes through there or something like that, that makes that a bit easier to do. I had a moment of confusion here because looking at the front panel connections from this case, uh, you've got, of course, your USB 2.0, uh, which is mainly coming from that uh, smart hub there. And USB 2.0 is a 10 pin block. It's got one pin that's uh, blanked out. So you don't accidentally, for instance, plug it into an HD audio port, which is the same size block, but has a different uh, blanked out pin. So you can't get these confused. I, I suddenly saw what I thought was another USB 2.0 header coming from the front and got confused and then realized, no, this is front panel. Front panel connectors in a little block the same size as a USB 2.0 uh, pinout header, which is actually pretty convenient, provided your motherboard has this same exact configuration, which our ASRock motherboard does, as far as I can tell, so that's cool. But just uh, keep an eye out and remember that you now have potentially three different little 10 pin blocks to distinguish between in your case or, or in my case whatever the case may be there's a rim shot for you joe Well, everyone, we have now theoretically finished this build. Although I will say that I have a lot of cables wedged down in there in the basement area down here for the power supply. And I did it fairly unceremoniously. Um, so hopefully nothing will go wrong when I hit the power button right now. Of course, I need to hit the power switch first and then hit the power button. Oh, hey. All right, we're seeing initial success. All the fans are spinning though. And in my professional opinion, I'd much rather have spinning fans than fancy LEDs. Um, 
So what I ended up having to do is swap out the memory. Yeah, the uh, Corsair Vengeance LED kit that I initially installed in there just would not boot in any way, shape, or form, even after I did get the system up and running and went and did a BIOS update to the latest one and went back and attempted to put it back in there. Uh, just no dice on that one. It's not on the compatibility list for this ASRock motherboard, so I guess that's not too unexpected, but I would have liked, at least liked to have seen like a, a BIOS screen or something with that. Anyway though, I did swap in the Corsair Dominator Platinum kit that I have, which is a 2x16 gig kit. So there's 32 gigs of memory in here now. That's a DDR4 3000 speed kit. That worked just fine, fortunately, and also matches the color scheme with the silver tops and white LEDs. And as you can maybe also now tell, I've got the LEDs up and running with the CAM software. One thing I want to point out, when I first got the system booted up and everything, after I had gotten Windows installed, I had actually unplugged all the USBs because I was having issues getting things uh, booted up and started. Even after I reconnected the USBs, uh, the lights on the air fans still were not lighting up. But I actually had to install the CAM software within Windows, uh, and then they lit up and were able to sync, and it did a firmware update on the Hue Plus. And uh, now you have the beautiful uh, candy cane light show that I have got set up right now, which is just using the marquee effect. Uh, which will change the light going along all the individually addressable LEDs uh, on each of the round uh, air fans, as well as the LED strip that's up here at the front. CAM software allows you to individually change the lighting configuration for the uh, stuff that's connected to the NZXT smart device, which has connection for uh, one of those addressable LEDs, the Hue Plus, as well as the NZXT Kraken. So pretty cool that you can configure all those. Uh, and then it does have a sync all function as well that uh, didn't work for me at first attempt, but uh, I kind of ran out of time there and I had to finish off this video. So I am pretty happy with this build ultimately, even though I did have some issues getting it up and running once it was all put together. The cable management is definitely challenging though if you're trying to connect up all the stuff that I've connected up in here. Now NZXC's stated goal with this case was to take the modern PC building challenges of integrating a bunch of fans, liquid cooling, as well as RGB. And when you're taking a bunch of different RGB devices, they're all individually addressable RGB LEDs, you have to have the cables all going the same direction and everything like that. So it is definitely challenging. It definitely adds a huge amount of extra work to the builds if you're not doing that type of thing. So bear that in mind, but you can get an end result that looks like this. And for what it's worth, I think NZ NZXT has taken a pretty challenging situation with all the cables and different ways they have to go and made it a lot easier by providing labels at each end for which way they're supposed to go and very well-written documentation. So you can take a look at that to sort of figure out how you're actually supposed to connect everything up. And um, yeah, just a little bit of trial and error and you can probably get it going just like I did here. Ultimately though, I really like the H400i. I'm a big fan. I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for micro ATX cases anyway. Uh, you have an extremely powerful system right here and you even have a decent amount of expandability with an accessible M.2 slot there, a full length uh, PCIe, although I believe it's a by four connection down there at the bottom. So you could add a TV tuner card or maybe a video capture card or maybe a 10 gigabit ethernet card down the road. So great job NZXT on the H400i. I will say that I have not investigated the I part of this case, the intelligence automatic sound and fan adjustment features that are integrated there. So uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to take a look at that or further address the performance of this system since this wasn't necessarily one of my monthly builds. I wasn't planning to go and test it, but I might if there is enough interest. So leave those comments in the comment section and of course hit the thumbs up button on your way out and subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this one. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time.